You are Locked On Nittany Lions, your daily podcast on the Penn State Nittany Lions, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Good, how are you? I'm good, thanks. Um, let's start with your quarterback so far. Uh, what's impressed you about that, that group that you have a timeline in mind that you think is harder than maybe the um, What's impressed me about the group is that uh, they are businesslike, um, but yet they don't get caught up in too much of the consternation. You know, that we have fun in that room. Um, it's, it's a joy being around those guys. I mean, I got the best job in the country. They're unbelievable people with unbelievable families from really good high school programs. They've got a great foundation. Um, they were raised the right way and, you know, they all want to compete and they all are, are really good leaders in their own way and it's growing uh, with, with the youth. Um, but they all understand the team concept and that's what's most impressive is, is they're fierce competitors, but they're great teammates. You know, we, we, we will talk about that as we get into more live scrimmages and, and have more further to evaluate. Over here on the left, front row, Dave. Michael here. Yes, sir. Um, I don't know how much you can or want to speak to this, but interior offensive linemen tend to move around a little bit. What, do you, what qualities do you ideally see in centers? They're, they're such multitasking kind of guys. Is there any overarching uh, kind of qualities you see in ideal centers? Two qualities, well, really three. Intelligence is huge at that position for the amount of IDs and the amount of communication that has to happen. Intelligence, um, footwork, and these are not in order. Um, intelligence, footwork, to be able to change, to be able to snap the ball. It's, I mean, it's hard enough to block a 320 pounder, but to snap the ball and then block a 320 pounder is another different deal in itself. So you got to have the strength and the, the footwork to go along with that, right? And then the mindset, the toughness, both mental and physically tough. I think those are the most critical things, in, in my opinion, of, of center play. Good. Rich, up here. Mike, right here to your right. Rich. Hi, how are you? Great. Uh, where do you see Nick and Katron taking the next step? Where can they improve, it? Um, not just as a runner, but in other facets as well? I think it's every aspect, really. Understanding the offense, uh, being multiple within our system, understanding the, the big picture of things. Uh, many of them line, lining up in, in different spots maybe and, and just being able to have some flexibility from a personnel standpoint. Um, being able to play maybe faster or maybe, you know, it's pass protections with them, those guys. And, and they did a really good job for, for freshmen last year to do what they did. I mean, you got to give Coach Sider a, a ton of credit for his ability to mentor those guys and to get those guys going. Um, but it's just not one thing, you know, it's it's the overall development. They got stronger. They got faster um, So from a physical standpoint, that's there and then the mental standpoint just understanding the game It's just it's just time on task. It's reps and it's everything So I, I don't think it's just one necessarily one aspect of their, their game We want to develop the whole player and make them as uh, as dynamic as they possibly can be. Back middle Allie. Hey in the back um, Coach Franklin talks a lot about position groups. He's liking their progress, who he wants to see step up. He's mentioned the wide receivers basically all spring into camp. Um, there's been a lot of moving parts in that, that room, but it's particularly a new position coach with Coach Higgins. How are you trying to support him as his position group is being highlighted? Uh, make sure that he's developing in the system that you want, and how do you evaluate how he's responded and the room has responded to those challenges from Coach Franklin? Yeah. I'm not a big micromanager of, of position coaches. Um, they are, you know, they, they kind of define their own uh, abilities in the meeting rooms and, and, and you know, Coach Hagen's, um, the relationships that he has with his players is over the top. Um, his presence in the room and the messages he sends and how he sets the mindset in that room is, is remarkable. And I think that's made a big difference. Um, so I'm, I'm excited about him. I'm excited about that entire room. 
um, you know, competition and just keep those guys. We're going to need them all, right? We're going to need all those guys, and they all have to continue to press on. And when we ask them to block, they got to be physical as heck. When we ask them to run routes and it's man coverage, they got to separate, make plays, and create, um, you know, big play opportunities in space. You know, that's the name of the game. So production will be rewarded, and, and we're going to continue to uh, evaluate and keep the competition on. And uh, it's a long season, and we're going to need each and every one of those guys. That's for sure. Thank you. Up front, Daniel. Hey, Mike Curry. Hey, good. How are you? Doing well. Um, staying in the wide receiver room, I knew you added Dante Cephas this summer. What has been the, the early uh, impression of him, and what, based on what you saw at Kent State and have seen so far, what do you think he can bring to the room? Early impressions are that he, he's going to continue to learn and grow in this offense because it's new. Right, so any player, it doesn't matter. Um, they have to learn the system, um, whether it's signals, the verbiage, the alignments. The, um, but what we do know is that he won't blink. You know, early on, it's only been three practices. So I don't want to crown him, but um, he's he looks like and appears to be a guy that's going to be a little bit more ready, a lot more ready than maybe a rookie would be, right? Because he's seasoned. He's had big time game experience. And so you can see that early on that, that he understands the competitive nature of this level in this game. And so it's early to tell, but uh, you know, it's heading in the right direction. Front and center, Todd. Hey Coach Hagel. Good, how are you? Good. Uh, the rule change. You got an experienced offensive line, you got a great running game coming back, and some young quarterbacks. How much is this game going to change as it shortened as the first downs and the clock keeps moving after the first downs? And does this happen to be a year that might work in your guys' advantage? But just your overall thoughts on on the shortening of the game and less plays? It's interesting. I think I think the uh, the stat of points per play is probably the most important statistic in in football, right? When your efficiency, um, not just total yardage. Right, it's it's not about total plays. It's not about passing yards. It's about points per play, you know. And so for us, regardless of the of the rule change, and maybe now it's even magnified. Surely it is. It's it's all about being efficient on every snap, and and making sure that we're on schedule, that we're being explosive, and that we're ahead of it. And, and so, you know, I don't know. I've heard a stat that it's going to be somewhere around seven offensive plays per game. Uh, that you're losing, and so if you average 6.2 yards, you could do the math. Um, so, you know, it, it is what it is, but it's the same for both teams. So it is, it, it goes back to making sure that we're as efficient as we can be on it in every single football play. We'll go to Mark over here. To your right. Mike, can you address the strides that Jackson has made since he's gotten here, and just overall the benefits of a quarterback being able to arrive mid-year. You've had that the yep. last couple of years. Yep. It's amazing, you know, over the course of, of my career, seeing a guy that early enrolls and seeing where they're at, and then that next fall camp, seeing where guys are. And, and he's he's grown, it seems. It's early, way early. Um, you know, day three wasn't as good as day one and two for him. He made some silly mistakes. So it's going to be like that. It's going to be some, some highs and then some lows and then, you know, it's never just one straight line. Um, it, it's going to plateau. And so that's what day three was for him. And then how is he going to handle the adversity? So we're, you know, constantly working on the mental game and that sort of thing. But um, Jackson, when he hits the field, seems like he is a – he sees the field very well. He's good with the spatial concepts. He sees things, and, and that's a great sign. We have to get him better in the meeting rooms. We have to get him better – and this is typical for a young guy – we have to get them better um, spitting the information out and speaking how we speak and to be on it and have the command in the room and being able to uh, have just a better recall and articulate better in meetings. But then when he hits the field, he's a lot better. So it's just a matter of time and, and repping that stuff out, and that's our job as coaches to, to bring him up to speed. And, and uh, I'm really tickled to think of where he's at right now. Last question up front, Seth. Uh, James told us in Indianapolis that that wide receiver competition is extended, you know, to the tight ends. Um, for your, from your perspective, how is Theo and Tyler? How do they kind of complement each other? And why do you think a 12 personnel system could work with this year's room? 
Well, I think they're, I think we know what we're getting with those guys. I think they're proven commodities and, and I think they're very intelligent. And so they can do, um, they can operate a lot of football for you, um, whether it's in the pass game or the run game. Um, so they're quick to pick up things, um, but their leadership, you know, is the one area where I think is is really, really been impressive with those guys and their work ethic and their off season and how they train. Um, so they kind of provide you um, a, a lot of versatility, you know, and they and they do similar things, um, but they're physical. They can block very well. They run. They both have very good hands. And, uh, you know, we, we have a lot of flexibility within that to, to move around in 12 personnel and um, put those guys in, in the best position possible with regard to matchups. How's the defense playing us? So when you're 12 personnel, are they playing nickel or are they playing face defense? And all those sorts of things go into a game plan and how you think that you can match up those guys against a nickel or a safety or a backer. So it's all part of it, and it's really game to game on, on 12 personnel and how we view it. Um, but at the same time, you know, you got to put your best players on the field.